Hare Krishna, everyone out there in cyberspace and here, the Friday night crowd is here. The rest of the Friday night crowd are out of the Friday night program at the urban farm, Krishna Urban Farm in Houston. Uh, <clears throat> well, Facebook is back after 14 hours being offline, which is like some kind of, you know, international, you know, D disaster <laughs> for so many people, you know. But we were able to uh, post the recording made on the phone and then post it over to uh, Facebook. So we hope that you all were able to see it who didn't, who weren't online last night. Uh, welcome back, anyway. Uh, we're waltzing through the Bhagavatam together. Hare Krishna. Learning so many things and getting things that we know refreshed or deepened as we go, becoming more and more qualified to enter into the pastime to Krishna. Yes, that's the idea. <clears throat> In order to enter the pastimes of Krishna, we have to have a heart completely pure. And we also have to be full of spiritual conceptions. Right now, material conceptions are keeping us from seeing Krishna and um, being fully engaged in pure devotional service. So this is the this is the medicine. This is the medicine. Hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam and chanting the holy name and taking Krishna Prashadam, dancing and chanting in ecstasy. This is it. The medicine and the diet. Yeah. Okay. So let's hear what Sanatana Goswami has to say. <clears throat> as he does every day, by his mercy, about that. Well, first of all, I guess I better open up the program. There you go. Srimad <clears throat> Bhagavata Mihima Stotram from Srila Krishna, Sri Krishna Lila Stava, text 412 through 416 <clears throat> by Srila Sanatana Goswami, <clears throat> one of the most intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya. Sarvashastabdi piyusha sarva vetaika satpala sarva siddhanta ratnaja sarva lokaika drikprada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kalidvanduditha Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. <clears throat> Paramananda Pataya. Prema Varshaksharayate, Sarvada Sarvasevyaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna himself. Mareka Bando Matsangin, Madguro Man Mahadana. Manista Nagamad Bhagya Mad Ananda Namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu Saduta Dayin Adini Chochatakada Hanamun Chagadachin Mam Premna Vitkata Yospuda. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear of my heart and my voice with pure love. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, in Canto 4, 
chapter 29, starting with text 38. We're continuing to hear Narada Muni's explanation of his instructions to King Prachina Barishat. <clears throat> o best of kings, one who is faithful, who is always hearing the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is always engaged in the culture of Krishna consciousness, and in hearing the Lord's of, of the Lord's activities, very soon becomes eligible to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face. Congratulations to all present, present company included. Purport. Constant engagement in the transcendental loving service of Vasudev means constantly hearing the glories of the Lord. The principles of Bhakti Yoga, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmi, Nivedanam, are the only means by which, one, by which perfection can be attained. Simply by hearing of the glories of the Lord, one is elevated to the transcendental position. Shall I make a... Shall I... Color that in for, for inclusion in my uh, next year's offering. Simply by hearing the glories of the Lord, one, can, one is elevated to the transcendental position. I mean, how much more clear does Prabhupada have to make it? What we're supposed to be doing. Okay. Texts 39 and 40. <clears throat> My dear king, in the place where pure devotees live, following the rules and regulations, and thus purely conscious and engaged with great eagerness in hearing and chanting the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in that place, if one gets a chance to hear their constant flow of nectar, which is exactly like the waves of a river, one will forget the necessities of life, namely hunger and thirst, and, a, and become immune to all kinds of fear, lamentation, and illusion. Purport. The cultivation of Krishna consciousness is possible where great devotees live together and constantly engage in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. In a holy place like Vrindavan, there are many devotees constantly engaged in chanting and hearing the glories of the Lord. If one gets the chance to hear from pure devotees in such a place, allowing the constant flow of the river of nectar to come from the mouths of pure devotees, then the cultivation of Krishna consciousness becomes very easy. When one is engaged in constantly hearing the glories of the Lord, he certainly rises above the bodily conception. When one is in the bodily conception, he feels the pangs of hunger and thirst fear, lamentation, and illusion. But when one is engaged in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, he transcends the bodily conception. The word Bhagavad Guna Nukatana Shravana Vyagra Chetasa meaning always eager to find the place where the glories of the Lord are being heard and chanted is significant in this verse. A businessman is always very eager to go to a place where business is transacted. Similarly, a devotee is very eager to hear from the lips of liberated devotees. Srila Prabhupada, Ki, Jai. As soon as one hears the glories of the Lord from the liberated devotees, he immediately becomes impregnated with Krishna consciousness. This is also confirmed in another verse. Satam Prasangan mamavir yabasam bido babanti rit karna rasayana kataha taj joshanad ashapavar gabartmani shadha ritir bhakti ranukramishiti. 
in the association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and to the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation, and therefore he is freed, and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. Bhagavatam 3.25.25 in the association of pure devotees, one becomes attached to hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. In this way, one can cultivate Krishna consciousness. And as soon as this, Krishna, this cultivation is advanced, one can become faithful to the Lord, devoted to the Lord, and attached to the Lord. And thus one can very quickly attain full Krishna consciousness. The sweet success and the cultivation of Krishna consciousness is hearing from the right person. A Krishna conscious person is never disturbed by the bodily necessities, namely eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Text 41 Because the conditioned soul is always disturbed by the bodily necessities such as hunger and thirst, he has very little time to cultivate attachment to hearing the nectarian words of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. PURPORT Unless one is associated with devotees, one, he cannot cultivate Krishna consciousness. Near Bhajana Bhajan, cultivating Krishna consciousness in a solitary place is not possible for the neophyte, for he will be disturbed by the bodily necessities, eating, sleeping, mating, in defending. Being so disturbed, one cannot cultivate Krishna consciousness. We therefore see the devotees known as Sahajya, who make everything very easy, do not associate with advanced devotees. Such persons in the name of devotional activities are addicted to all kinds of sinful acts, illicit sex, intoxication, gambling, and meat eating. There are so many so-called devotees passing themselves off as devotees while engaging in these sinful activities. In other words, one who is influenced by sinful activity cannot be accepted as a person in Krishna consciousness. A person addicted to sinful life cannot develop Krishna consciousness as indicated in this verse. Text 42 to 44. The most powerful Lord Brahma, the father of, the, of all progenitors, Lord Shiva, Manu, Daksha, and the other rulers of humankind, the four saintly first-class brahmacharis, <clears throat> headed by Doug, Patrick. Anyway, I, I won't embarrass you all. There was a joke. The four saintly uh, first-class brahmacharis, headed by Sanaka and Sanatana. The great sages Marichi, Atri, Atri, Angira, Pulasya, Pulaha, Kratu, Brigu, and Vashista, and my humble self, Narada, are all stalwart brahmanas who can speak authoritatively on Vedic literature. We are very powerful because of austerities, meditation, and education. Nonetheless, even after inquiring about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whom we always see, we do, not per we, do not we do not know perfectly about him. Purport. According to the foolish Darwinian theory of the anthropologists, it is said that 40,000 years ago, Homo sapiens had not appeared on this planet because the process of evolution had not reached that point. However, the Vedic histories, the Puranas and Mahabharata, relate human histories that extend millions and millions of years into the past. In the beginning of creation, there was a very intelligent personality, Lord Brahma, and from him emanated all the Manus and the Brahmacharis like Sanaka and Sanatana, as well as Lord Shiva, the great sage, sages, and Narada. All these personalities underwent great austerities and penances, and thus became authorities in Vedic knowledge. Perfect knowledge for human beings 
as well as all living entities, is contained in the Vedas. All the above mentioned great personalities are not only powerful, being cognizant of past, present, and future, but are also devotees. Still, in spite of their great education <clears throat> in knowledge, and despite their meeting the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu, they cannot actually understand the perfection of the living entity's relationship with Lord Vishnu. This means that these personalities are still limited as far as their knowledge of the unlimited is concerned. The conclusion is that simply by advancing one's knowledge, one cannot be accepted as an expert in understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Personality of Godhead can be understood not by advanced knowledge, but by pure devotional service, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, 1855. Bhaktya mam abhijan, <coughs> abhijanati yavanyas chasmi tatpataha. Unless one takes to the pure, transcendental devotional service, he cannot understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead in truth. Everyone has some imperfect ideas about the Lord. So-called scientists and philosophical speculators are unable to understand the Supreme Lord by virtue of their knowledge. Knowledge is not perfect unless one comes to the platform of devotional service. This is confirmed by the Vedic version. Atapite devapadam bujat dvaya prasada leshe nugrihita evahi Janati tatvam bhagavan mehimno nachanya eko pichiram pichinban. Bhagavatam 10, 14, 29. The speculators, the jnanis, go on speculating about the Supreme Personality of Godhead for many, many hundreds and thousands of years. But unless one is favored by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one cannot understand his supreme glories. All the great sages mentioned in this verse have their planets near Brahmaloka, the planet where Lord Brahma resides, along with four great sages, Sanaka, Sanatana, Sanandana, and Sanat Kumara. These sages reside in different stars, known as the Southern Star, which circle the Pole Star. The Pole Star, called Dhruva Loka, is the pivot of this universe and all planets move around this pole star. All these stars are planets, as far as we can see, within this one universe. According to Western theory, all these stars are different suns, but according to Vedic information, there is only one sun within this universe. All these so-called stars are but different planets. Besides the, this universe, there are many millions of other universes, and each of them contains similar innumerable stars and planets. Text 45 Despite the cultivation of Vedic knowledge, which is unlimited, and, and the worship of different demigods by the symptoms of Vedic mantras, demigod worship does not help one to understand the supreme, powerful personality of Godhead. Purport As stated in Bhagavad Gita 7.20, those whose minds are distorted by material desires surrender unto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worship according to their own natures. Many people are interested in worshipping demigods to acquire powers. Each demigod has a particular power. For instance, the demigod Indra, the king of heaven, has power to shower rain on the surface of the globe and to give sufficient vegetation to the earth. This demigod is described in the Vedas, Bhajra Hastak Purandara. Indra, Indra rules the water supply with a thunderbolt in his hand. The thunderbolt itself is controlled by Indra. Similarly, other demigods, Agni, Varuna, Chandra, Surya, have particular powers. All these demigods are worshipped in the Vedic hymns 
through a symbolic weapon. Therefore it is said here, mantra lingayar vyabhachinam By such worship, karmis may obtain the benediction of material opulence in the form of animals, riches, beautiful wives, many followers, and so on. But by but such material opulence, however, by such material opulence, however, one cannot understand the supreme personality of Godhead. Text 46. When a person is fully engaged in devotional service, he is favored by the Lord, who bestows his causeless mercy. At such a time, the awakened devotee gives up all material activities and ritualistic performances mentioned in the Vedas. Purport. In the previous verse, those who are in knowledge have been described as unable to appreciate the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Similarly, this verse indicates that those who are followers of the Vedic rituals, as well as those who are followers of fruitive activities, are unable to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In these two verses, both the karmis and jnanis are described as unfit to understand him. As described by Srila Rupa Goswami, only when one is completely free from mental speculation and fruitive activity, anyabhilashita shunyam jnana karma jnanavritam, can one engage in pure devotional service without being polluted by material desires. The significant word atma bhavita indicates that the Lord is awakened in one's mind if one constantly thinks of Him. A pure devotee is always thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord. Savai Pamana Krishna Padada Vindayo Bhagavatam 9, 4, 18 A pure devotee cannot remain a moment without being absorbed in thoughts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This constant thinking of the Lord is described in Bhagavad Gita as satata yuktanam, always engaging in the Lord's service. Bhajatam priti purvakam, this is devotional service in love and affection. Because the Supreme Personality of Godhead dictates to the pure devotee from within, the devotee is saved from all material activities. Even the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies are considered material activities because by such activities one is simply elevated to other planetary systems, the residential abodes of the demigods. Lord Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 9.25 Yanti deva vrta devan pitrin yanti priti vrtaha bhutani yanti bhuteja yanti madhya jinopima Those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. Those who worship ancestors go to the ancestors, and those who worship me will live with me. The word Atma Bhavita also indicates that the devotee is always engaged in preaching to deliver conditioned souls. It is said of the, it is said of the six Goswamis, <coughs> Nana, Shastra Pichada Naika Nipunao Saddharma Sangstapakao Loka Nam Hitakadino A pure devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always thinking of how fallen conditioned souls can be delivered. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, influenced by the merciful devotees, attempt to deliver fallen souls, enlightens the people in general from within by its causeless mercy. Shall I read that again? Mm -hmm. Shall I read that again? Okay, I won't read it again. Please. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Maybe Kurt, I don't know. Are you sure? Are you sure? Absolutely. Well, we got one absolutely. That's pretty good. <laughs> Dr. Marcus, you're headed in the right direction. <laughs> I'm going to read it again, whether you want to hear it or not. The, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, influenced by the merciful devotees' attempt to deliver fallen souls, 
enlightens the people in general from within by his causeless mercy. So even if it seems like we're not getting results, if we just try sincerely, we're getting the results. Because Krishna's compassion and his response to that desire, that pure desire. In other words, if you just sit in one place, of course we don't want to sit in just one place, but if you were pure and you just sat in one place and prayed continuously, please help deliver them. They're suffering so much. Krishna in the heart makes arrangements at least for those who have come to the point of being able to hear. And he brings them right here. If a devotee is blessed by, by another devotee, this, is, this nectar is too much. This is a fantastic purport. If a devotee is blessed by another devotee, he becomes free from karmakanda and ganakanda activities. As confirmed in Brahma Sangita, Vedeshu Durlabham, the Supreme Personality of Godhead cannot be realized through Karmakanda and Jnanakanda. Adurlabham, Atmabhato, the Lord is realized only by a sincere devotee. This material world, the cosmic manifestation, is created by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the living entities have come here to enjoy themselves. The Vedic instructions guide them according to different regulated principles, and intelligent people take advantage of these instructions. Thus they enjoy material life without being disturbed. This is already illusion, and to get out of this illusion by one's own endeavor is very difficult. The general populace is engaged in material activities, and when people are a little advanced, they become attracted by the ritualistic ceremonies mentioned in the Vedas. However, when one is frustrated in the performance of these ritualistic ceremonies, he again comes to material activities. In this way, both the followers of the Vedic rituals and the followers of material activities are entangled in conditional life. These people get the seed of devotional service only by the good will of the Guru and Krishna. This is confirmed in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Guru Krishna Prasadi Poya, Bhakti Lata Bij. When one is engaged in devotional service, he is no longer attracted to material activities. When a man is covered by different designations, he cannot engage in devotional service. One has to become freed from such designative activities, sarvopadi vinir muktam, and become pure in order to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead through purified senses. Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam, Bhaktir, Uchite. The service of the Lord through purified senses is called Bhakti Yoga or devotional service. The sincere devotee is always helped by the super soul who resides within the heart of every living entity as Lord Krishna confirms in Bhagavad Gita 10.10 Tesham satatidyuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam didami buddhi yogam tam inamam upayantite To those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. This is the stage of becoming free from the contamination of the material world. At such a time, a devotee makes friends with, other, with another devotee and his engagement in material activities ceases completely. At that time, he attains the favor of the, of the Lord and loses his faith in material civilization, which begins with Varnashram Dharma. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaks clearly of one's becoming liberated from the Varnashram Dharma, the most exalted system of human civilization. At such a time, one feels himself to be perpetually the servant of Lord Krishna, a position taken by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. Naham vipro nachanada patir nabi vaishyo nishudro Naham varni nachagriha patir 
novanasto yatirva kintu prudyan nikila paramananda purnam ritabder gopi bartu padakamalayor dasa das anudas Pajavali 63 I am not a brahmana, chatriya, vaisha, or shudra. I am not a brahmachari, grihasta, vanaprasta, and sanya, or sanyas. Here we are, all of us here. Practically everybody uh, represented. You know, Guru Priya said, vanaprasta, her husband's always here and there, and she's like, coming here every day to, to hear and chant with us, Vanaprastha. <laughs> We're all here. I'm not a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shudra. I'm not a Brahmachari, Grihasta, Vanaprastha, or Sannyasi. What am I? I am the eternal servant of the servant of the servant of Lord Krishna. Through the disciplic succession, one can attain this conclusion, which is the perfect elevation to the transcendental platform. I think we ought to shrine this purport. You know? Print it out and then paper the walls with it. So everywhere we look we see this purport. Amazing purport. Okay. Maybe I'll just print that purport as my next year's offering. Okay. Text 47. My dear King Barish <coughs> Barishman, you should never, out of, out of ignorance, take to the Vedic rituals or to fruitive activity which may be pleasing to hear about or which may appear to be the goal of self-interest. You should never take these to be the ultimate goal of life. Purport. In Bhagavad Gita 2.42-43 it is said, Yam imam pushpitam bacham pravadant yavipashtitaha Veda Vada Ritak Parta Nanyat Astiti Vadinaha Kamat Vana Swargapada Janma Karma Palapradam Kriya Vishesha Bahulam Bogaishvarya Gatim Priti Men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas, which recommend various fruitive activities for elevation to heavenly planets result in good birth, power, and so forth. Being desirous of sense gratification and opulent life, they think that there is nothing more than this. Generally, people are very much attracted to the fruitive activities sanctioned in the Vedic rituals. One may be very much attracted to becoming elevated to heavenly planets by performing great sacrifices like those of King Barishman, Sri Narada Muni wanted to stop King Barishman from engaging in such fruitive activities. Therefore, he now, he is now directly telling him, don't be interested in such temporary benefits. In modern civilization, people are very much interested in exploiting the resources of material nature through the methods of science. Indeed, this is considered advancement. This is not actually advancement, however, but is simply pleasing to hear. <laughs> Although we are advancing according to such concocted methods, we are forgetting our real purpose. Bhaktivinoda Thakur therefore says, Jada vidya yata mayara vaibhava tumara bhajane badha. Materialist activity, materialistic studies are the glare of maya only for they are an obstacle to spiritual progress. The temporary comforts of life experienced either on this planet or on other planets are all to be taken as illusory because they do not touch the real purpose of life. The real purpose of life is to go back home, back to Godhead. Ignorant of the real purpose of life, people take to either gross materialist acti activities or ritualistic activities. King Barishman is herein requested not to be attached to such activities. In the Vedas it is stated that the performance of sacrifice is the actual purpose of life. A section of the Indian population known as the Arya Samajists 
laid too much stress on the sacrificial portion of the Vedas. This verse indicates, however, that such sacrifices are to be taken as illusory. Actually, the aim of human life should be God-realization or Krishna consciousness. The Vedic performances are, of course, very glittering and pleasing to hear about, but they do not serve the real purpose of life. Text 48. Text 48. You have to go? Okay. We'll see you soon. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Text 48. Those who are less intelligent accept the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies as all in all. They do not know that the purpose of the Vedas is to understand one's own home, where the Supreme Personality of Godhead lives. Not being interested in their real home, they are illusioned and search after other homes. Purport <clears throat> Generally, people are not aware of their interest in life to return home back to Godhead. People do not know about their real home in the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, there are many, many Vaikuntha planets, and the topmost planet is Krishna Loka. Goloka Vrindavan. Despite the so-called advancement of civilization, there is no information of the Vaikuntha Lokas, the spiritual planets. At the present moment, so-called advanced civilized men are trying to go to other planets, but they do not know that even if they go to the highest planetary system, Brahma Loka, they have to come back again to this planet. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, 8.16 Abrama Bhuvana Loka Punar Arvartanor Juna Mamu Petya Tukonteya Punar Jad Manavidyate From the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest all are places of misery wherein repeated dearth, birth and death take place but one who attains to my abode O son of Kunti never takes birth again <clears throat> Very interesting. When was it? A few days ago, I read something from Vriya Bhagavatamrita. You know, Krishna, I mean, Gopa Kumar coming into Goloka, finally attaining it. And when he got there, he wasn't born. He just he fell into the Jamuna, remember, in ecstasy? Uh, in, in here on earth, in Gokula which one of the things that is, you know, revealed in Briya Bhagavatamrita is that's the gateway. And then he fell into the Jamuna in ecstasy. He fainted and he fell into the Jamuna and the current carried him. And he, he said, I appeared to faint, but he didn't faint. He was just in another state of consciousness. And then he saw himself, you remember, you know, being taken on a path that he had never seen before and going faster than he ever could imagine going. And he opened his eyes, and he was in Goloka Vrindavan. And then there's a whole section where he tries to understand where he is, and it looks like Gokul in, on Earth. Of course, it doesn't have all the high-rise buildings around Vrindavan that are being built by the de developers from Delhi. <laughs> it's the natural place, like when Lord Chaitanya came you know, in, in Rupa Goswami, sent Rupa Goswami and Sanatan to develop it. And anyway, so then he starts, you know, walking around and realizing that this place is different. Even though it looks the same, it's different. And each person he meets, he understands that this person is in another consciousness, like nobody's ever met before. And he's been all these pl different places in the higher planetary systems and even in the boat of liberation, and in you know, Vishnu Loka and Vaikuntha planets, and so there's this charming uh, explanation of how all the Brajbasis are anticipating Krishna's coming back 
after being in the forest with the cowherd boys in Balaram to tend the cows. Yes. So then, e even the trees, she says, well, he didn't think, he thinks, well, how do you know? And she looks and she said, you see those trees? <laughs> and all the leaves are looking the same way, the same direction, you know. <laughs> and then he realized, oh, this is a different place, you know. And she says, I know that he's coming from here, because the trees can see much farther away than we can. Sure enough, he ends up coming. And then there's that classic, you know, description of Krishna's form and the the, the meeting of Gopu Kumar and how affectionate Krishna was. And then he says really something interesting. He says, oh, look, Sri Dhamma, it's, the, it's the, the sign of your family, you know, Sarupa, which is the first time in the whole book that his name is being mentioned that comes right out of Krishna's mouth. Sarupa. And then from then the whole book, then from then on he's called Sarupa instead of Gopu Kumar. So, and it goes on and on. I'll read to you a little bit later on. Because here it says, you know, despite the so-called advancement of civilization, there is no information of the Vaikuntha Lokas, the spiritual planets. I, I'm up a little bit in the purport. At the present moment, so-called advanced civilized men are trying to go to other planets. Anyway, Hare Krishna. If, if one goes to the highest planetary system within this universe, he still has to, to return after the effects of pious activities are finished. Space vehicles may go very high in the sky, but as soon as their fuel is finished, they have to return to this earthly planet. All these activities are performed in illusion. The real attempt should now be to, to return home back, back to Godhead. The pro, this process, the process is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Yantimat Yajino Pimam 925. Those who engage in the devotional service of the per Supreme Personality of Godhead return home back to Godhead. Human life is very valuable, and one should not waste it in vain exploration of other planets. One should be intelligent enough to t return to Godhead. One should be interested in f information about the spiritual Vaikuntha planets, and in particular, the planet known as Goloka Vrindavan, and should learn the art of going there by the simple method of devotional service. Beginning with hearing, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu. This is also confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam 12, 3, 51. Kaler dosha nidevajan astiyeko mahan gunaha kirtanad eva krishnasya muktasanga param brajet. One can go to the supreme planet param brajet simply by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. This is especially meant for the people of this age. Kaler, dosha, nidhe. It is the special advantage of this age that simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, one can become purified of all material contamination and return home back to Godhead. There is no doubt about this. Text 49. My dear King, <clears throat> the entire world is covered by the sharp points of kusha grass. <laughs> and on the strength of this, you have become proud because you have killed various types of animals in sacrifice. Because of your foolishness, you do not know that devotional service is the only way one can please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So now he's getting right down to the bare facts and telling the king directly what all these allegorical story is about. Purpose of it. <clears throat> you cannot understand this fact. Because of your foolishness, you do not know that, that devotional service is the only way one can please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
You cannot understand this fact. Your only activities should be those that can please the Supreme Person the Personality of Godhead. Our education should be such that we become elevated in Krishna consciousness. Purport. In this verse, the great sage Narada Muni directly insults the king <clears throat> because he was engaged in performing sacrifices that entail the killing of a great number of animals. So sometimes we may get instructions <laughs> from the Lord in the scriptures or from our spiritual master or even from other Vaishnavas who can see what's going on. Because, you know, when you live in the association of the devotees, you know, if you're doing some nonsense, eventually it comes out somehow or other. Because, you know, devotees are not ordinary people. You know, they got this, we don't need the internet actually. We get this vision that comes from our purified conscious senses, you know? So even when we sometimes get chastised or we hear things that are, you know, kind of exposing us for what we are, we have to learn the art of relishing that. We should relish it because it's actually the medicine. We're taking the medicine just like you got the thing in your arm, take the medicine, eventually it will go away. Okay, this material body is a diseased condition. In reality, this material body is a disease surrounding the spirit soul, the senses of the spirit soul. Unless one realizes that, you can't actually perform loving service, like Gopal Kumar is now it's having loving service. But, in the meantime, we have to practice. Even if you're not doing loving service, you have to practice doing sadhana, bhakti, devotional service and practice. Follow the rules and regulations strictly. Hear and chant like this regularly, every day. And eventually, purify our minds to the point where we can always be thinking of how to do good for others and how to help others and get our minds off of our bodily uh, conception or bodily relationships and gradually when, when Krishna is p pleased with us from that then he reveals himself then we can perform pure devotional service loving pure devotional service we're also, we're, if we don't have ulterior motives we're already performing devotional service pure devotional service Prabhupada told once he was asked by a, by a reporter in the program public program he says how many pure devotees are there? You know, and I think he was expecting, or we were expecting to hear one out of proud by me. <laughs> but he asked his secretary, who was sitting next to him, how many initiated devotees are there? And he gave him some number. At the time, it was like 50 or something like this, way in the beginning. And he probably said, there are at least 50. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you, become free from ulterior motives and you don't have another purpose of joining and taking initiation and, you know, becoming purified and capable to take second initiation and go and touch the deities and serve the deities directly, you know, then you can find out. Actually, anything that does not, anything that is done which does not lead to Krishna consciousness is a sinful activity. And any education that does not lead one to understand Krishna is false education. If Krishna consciousness is missing, one is simply engaged in false activities and false educational pursuits. Text 50. <clears throat> Sri Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the super soul and guide of all living entities who have accepted material bodies within this world. He is the supreme controller of all material activities and material nature. He is also our best friend, and everyone should take shelter at his lotus feet. In doing so, one's life will be auspicious. 
purport. In Bhagavad Gita, 1861, it is said, Ishwarat Sarvabhutanam Riddhishar Junatishtiti. The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjuna. The living entity is within the body, and the super soul, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is also there. He is called Antaryami and Chaitya Guru. As Lord Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita 1515, he is controlling everything. Sarva Sicharham Riditanavishto Matak Smritir Gyanam Apavanamcha. I am seated in everyone's heart, and from me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. Everything is being directed by the super soul within the body. Therefore, the better part of valor is to take his direction and be happy. To take his directions, one needs to be a devotee. And this is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 10.10. Tesham satadiyuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yinamam upayanti te. To those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Although the super soul is in everyone's heart, Ishwara Sarvabhutanam Riddhishar Junatishtati, he talks only to the pure devotees who constantly engage in his service. In Chaitanya Bhagavad, Ancha Kanda, 345, it is said, Tanhare Sabali Mantra Adyayana Krishna Padapadmije Kariyestina Mana One who has fixed his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna is to be understood as having the best education and, and as having studied all the Vedas. There are also other appropriate quotes in Chaitanya Bhagavat. Se se bijara pala janiha nishjaya krishna paripadmi jadi chitti vritti hat raya. The perfect result of an education is the fixing of one's mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. Chaitanya Bhagavad Adi Kanda 13178. Dig vijaya kadiba vijara karya nahe. Ishwari bhajile ye se vidya satya kahe. Conquering the world by means of material education is not desirable. If one engages himself in devotional service, his education is perfected. Adi Kanda 12.49, Chaitanya Bhagavat. Parid kenin loka krishna bhakti jani bare se yari nahila tabi. Vidyaya Kikare. The purpose of education is to understand Krishna and his devotional service. If one does not do so, then education is false. Antikanda 3.44. Jaitanya Bhagavat. Tanhare se bali dharma karma sarachara. Ishwade se priti janme samata sabara. Being cultured. Educated, very active, and religious means developing natural love for Krishna. Everyone has dormant love for Krishna. And by culture of education, that has to be awakened. That is the purpose of this Krishna consciousness movement. Once Lord Chaitanya asked Sri Ramananda Roy what the best part of education was, and Ramananda Roy replied that the best part of education is advancement in Krishna consciousness. Text 51. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> One who is engaged in devotional service <clears throat> has not the least fear in material existence. This is because the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Supersoul and friend of everyone. 
One who knows this secret is actually educated. And one thus educated can become the spiritual master of the world. One who is an actually bona fide spiritual master, representative of Krishna, is not different from Krishna. Purport. Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur says, Sakshadari Twena Samasta Shastrayir Uktastata Bhavyata Eva Sadbihi. The spiritual master is described in every scripture as the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The spiritual master is accepted as identical with the Supreme Personality of Godhead because he is the most confidential servant of the Lord, Kintu Prabhur Yak. Priya Eva Tasya. The purport is that both the super soul and the individual soul are very dear to everyone. Everyone loves himself, and when he becomes more advanced, he loves the super soul also. A person who is self realized <clears throat> does not recommend the worship of anyone but the super soul. He knows that to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead is easier <clears throat> than to worship various demigods under the influence of lust and the desire for material enjoyment. The devotee is therefore always engaged <clears throat> in the loving ser devotional service of the Lord. Such a person is a true guru. In Padma Purana, it is said, Shad karma nipuno vipro Mantra, Tantra, Visharadaha, a Vaishnava, Guru Nasyad, Vaishnava, Chapacho Guru. Even if a Brahmana is very learned in Vedic scriptures and knows the six occupational duties of a Brahmana, he cannot become a Guru or spiritual master unless he is a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. However, if one is born in a family of dog eaters, but as a pure devotee of the Lord, he can become a spiritual master. The conclusion is that one cannot become a spiritual master unless he is a pure devotee of the Lord. One who is a spiritual master in accordance with the above descriptions of devotional service is to be understood as the Supreme Personality of Godhead personally present. According to the words mentioned here, Guru or Hari, consulting a bona fide spiritual master means consulting the Supreme personality of Godhead personally. One should therefore take shelter of such a bona fide spiritual master. Success in life means accepting a spiritual master who knows Krishna as the only supreme beloved personality. One should worship such a confidential devotee of the Lord. The great Saint Narada continued O great personality, I have replied properly about all that you have asked me. Now hear another narration whoa, that is adopted, accepted by saintly persons and is very confidential. So I'll stop here. We're past our... I mean, I, I'm getting lit, attached to this. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> I mean, these last purple... It's, isn't it structured like this? Whenever these great souls speak or tell something, then right at the end, it, it, it concentrates it all and then given Prabhupada's purports come roaring out at us. You know, his ecstasies come roaring out and we get such a clear picture and this taste of what it would be like to be pure and not to have any other desires and not to want anything else except for Krishna. So I'm going to start on 52 tomorrow because it looks like Nard is going to go into another thing. Or maybe we're right at the end of the chapter, are we? No? Still some ways to go. Huh? How many verses to go? Quite a few. Okay, so I'm not going to finish tonight. We could go all night and finish this chapter tonight. <laughs> anyway, we'll stay regulated for our Sadhana Bhakti. Okay, we'll start at 52 tomorrow night. 
Okay, now it comes our, my favorite time when I get to hear from you all. <clears throat> open mic day, open mic hour, open mic minutes, whatever it is. That must have been real, you know, sometimes when the reading is so satisfying, you don't really, you know, you're just satisfied with what, what we've heard. Sometimes it's like that, and Prabhupada really gets on a roll. Yeah, because when it's like that, then even the doubts we might have had or have, they get satisfied to the point where they go away. And then it's like, oh, I remember at times being in Prabhupada's presence when there was something in my, and then as soon as I came into his presence, uh, okay, it's fine. <laughs> there was no, there was no real <laughs> reason to say anything, just bask in it, just basking in the association of Srimad Bhagavatam. So nice, so nice. Yeah, and the difference in our consciousness from when we come and first start to hear and after we finish is it's self-explanatory, it's self-effulgent. It doesn't need, you know, if we're actually hearing, which I know that you guys are today, especially because I'm also tasting it. You're, you're hearing your hearts. Okay, we'll go for 15 more minutes. 52. <laughs> the, great, the great sage Narda continued, <clears throat> O great personality, I have replied properly about all that you have asked me. Now hear another narration that is accepted by saintly persons and is very confidential, purport. Sri Narda Muni is personally acting as the spiritual master of King Barishman. It was Narda Muni's intention that through his instructions the king would immediately give up all engagement in furtive activity and take to devotional service. However, although the king understood everything, he, he <clears throat> was still not prepared to give up his engagements. In the, as the following verses will show, the king was contemplating sending for his sons who were away from home executing austerities and penances. After their return, he would entrust his kingdom to them and then leave home. This is the position of most people. They accept the bona fide spiritual master and listen to him but when the spiritual master indicates they should leave home and fully engage in devotional service, they hesitate. Luckily for us, Prabhupada didn't say that. He said, just engage in pure devotional service. <laughs> Stay where you are, Lord Chaitanya said, and just do it. <laughs> Stop speculating and just hear. <clears throat> the duty of the spiritual master is to instruct the disciple as long as he does not come to the understanding that this materialistic way of life, fruit of activity, is not at all beneficial. Actually, one should take to devotional service from the beginning of life, as Prahlad Maharaj advised, Komara, Acharet Pragyo, Dharman, Bhagavatam Iha, Bhagavatam 7.6.1. According to all the instructions of the Vedas, we can understand that unless one takes to Krishna consciousness and devotional service, he is simply wasting his time engaging in the fruit of activities of material existence. Narada Muni therefore decided to relate another allegory to the king so that he might be induced to give up family life within material existence. Text 53 My dear king, Please, search out that deer who is engaged in eating grass 
in a very nice flower garden along with his wife. That deer is very much attached to his business and is enjoying the sweet singing of the humble bumblebees in his garden. Just try to understand his position. He is unaware that before him is a tiger, which is accustomed to living at the cost of another's flesh. Behind the deer is a hunter who is threatening to pierce him with sharp arrows. Thus the deer's death is imminent. Purport. Here is an allegory in which the king is advised to find a deer that is always in a dangerous position. <laughs> Although threatened from all sides, the deer simply eats grass in a nice flower garden, unaware of the danger all around him. All living entities, especially human beings, think themselves very happy in the midst of families, as if living in a flower garden and hearing the sweet humming of bumblebees Everyone is centered around his wife, who is the beauty of family life. The bumblebee's humming may be compared to the talk of children. The human being, just like the deer, enjoys his family without knowing that before him is the time factor, which is represented by the tiger. The fruitive activities of a living entity simply create another dangerous position and oblige him to accept different types of bodies. For a deer to run after a mirage of, the desert, of water in the desert is not unusual. The deer is also very fond of sex. The conclusion is that one who lives like a deer will be killed in due course of time. Vedic literatures therefore advise it that we should understand our constitutional position and take to devotional service before death comes. According to the Bhagavatam, eleven nine twenty nine, Labdwa Sur Ladamidam Bahusam Bhavante Manusham Artadamanit Yamapi Hadiraha Turnam Yateta Napatet Anumriti Javan Nishre Sasaya Vishaya Kalusar Vataksyat. After many births, we have attained this human form. Therefore, before death comes, we should engage ourselves in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. That is the fulfillment of human life. I'm going to stop there because I'm losing my voice. Can you hear it? It's, getting, it's going, so I have to make sure that I don't lose my voice. It's my my duty. Thank you so much, all of you, for your ears and your hearts, and your willingness to come and hear every night. It's great good fortune for all of us. We pray that we can do this until that day comes, the, imminent, the eventual day when we have to leave this body. It's not possible to think about it when you're young, but when you get older, the thought comes a little bit more, a little bit more, and then we can get more serious. Narada Muni ki jai. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Go prem anandi hari hari bol. Thank you to all of you out there in cyberspace. Please come keeping to and, and, and joining us for this wonderful journey uh, on through the Srimad Bhagavatam to the eternal pastimes of Krishna. Hare Krishna.